If you've ever tried to remove stickers or graphics from your dirt bike plastics, you know how difficult it can be to remove the sticky goo they leave behind. There are a number of products on the market that will remove the sticky goo. The question is, which of these products can remove the sticky goo without ruining the finish of your dirt bike plastics? Well, I did an investigation using the products you see here to answer that very question. I think you'll be surprised to learn that only one of these products worked well, and I think you'll be even more surprised which one it is. So first, I had to find some sticky goo to work with, so I removed some graphics from several different plastic pieces. In some cases, the graphics came off relatively clean, leaving minimal residue, but that was not the case with this shroud from my 2006 YZ125. It seems the older the graphic, the more sticky goo you could expect it to leave behind. I decided to experiment first with the side number plate on my 2017 YZ125. The sticker left just a small column of sticky goo right down the middle. I'll use a microfiber towel and a little bit of each product on different sections of the goo. Let's see if they'll remove the goo without ruining the luster of the black plastic. The acetone removed the goo quickly and did not dull or discolor the plastics. The mineral spirits removed the goo but left a slight dull haze. The turpentine also dulled the finish making the plastic hazy. No good. The brake cleaner failed in a similar fashion. As did the WD-40. So did the contact cleaner. And surprisingly, even the Goo Gone dulled the finish. All of these products except the acetone dulled and discolored the finish. You can see how the black plastic has taken on a hazy matte appearance. Now, if you're covering your plastics with new graphics, then this haziness probably doesn't matter. Just keep in mind that graphics usually don't cover the entire plastic. The plastic will be visible along the edges, around the bolt holes, and the cutouts. After experimenting with the number plate, I decided to see how these seven products affected the finish on a perfectly clean fender. Maybe it was a combination of the goo and the product that was dulling the surface. This time I got even more scientific using tape to separate each region. I applied each product by rubbing it back and forth about 20 times. Then I added some more product to the cloth and rubbed 20 more times. I was careful to always clean the section of the cloth when moving on to a new product so there's no cross-contamination. Again, the acetone was the only product that did not leave a dull, hazy finish behind. But then I got to thinking, maybe the dull, hazy finish is not that big of a deal. If I could just buff it out with some plastic polish and restore that new plastic appearance, then everything would be fine. So I went to work applying some Meguiar's plastic polish by hand on the side number plate. Unfortunately, this only seemed to dull and discolor the plastic even more. Perhaps a product that costs twice as much will do the trick. Nope, same result. Let's try using a drill and a buffing wheel. Still, not any better. 
It's actually worse. It seems the more product and elbow grease I put into this, the more I'm ruining my plastics. I've seen some people on YouTube use heat guns and torches to bring the shine back of dull dirt bike plastics. Let's give that a try. Well, the heat helped reduce the discoloration, but it still does not shine like new. I would describe it as a matte or satin finish, but not glossy. The fact that none of these buffing products or other tricks can return the plastic to their factory finish make it even more important to find a product that can remove the sticky goo without ruining the plastic. So far, acetone has been the most promising, but I've only tried it on a number plate with a little bit of goo and a fender with no goo at all. I had to find a piece with gobs of goo to see just what the acetone could do. This shroud from my 2006 YZ125 seemed to be the perfect piece to work with. Most of its surface was covered with sticky goo, but there were a few clean spots as well. It took a bit more effort than I had anticipated, but the acetone did dissolve and remove the goo, but with less than a perfect outcome this time. Wherever there had been sticky goo, the plastics were noticeably less shiny. This led me to the conclusion that the sticky goo itself, if left on the plastics long enough, can affect the finish as well. So, to summarize, all of these products will remove sticky goo from plastics, but only acetone will remove the sticky goo without dulling the finish. Plastic polishes will not restore the shine. Heat guns and torches will bring back some of the color, but will not restore that glossy factory finish. If stickers are left on plastics for a long time, the adhesives themselves may ruin the finish of your plastics. So if you want plastics that look brand new, you'll have to buy new plastics. If you're just looking for the best product to clean up some old plastics before applying some new graphics, then acetone is the way to go. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other dirt bike videos here on Go Hobby. Ride safe, everyone.